What's up guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today we're gonna go over an issue that I've got with my Stoger coach gun, Stoger shotgun, 12 gauge coach gun, short model. If you have any issues with the audio, super sorry. It's actually rainy and windy today. I'm under a tin roof. I didn't bring my lav mic. I didn't bring any of that stuff. I just was gonna work on this gun. Wanted to bring you guys along just in case you're having the same issue that I'm having. What was I doing here? Shotgun. Sorry about that. Cowboy action guys love them. I bought them because I pretended like I was going to be a cowboy action guy. Who doesn't love a uh, who doesn't love a little bit of a boomstick? Am I right? So um, I was shopping smart and got this guy. It lived for a couple boxes, a couple hundred rounds. And then all of a sudden, one side just stopped firing. My dog wants to say hello. He he doesn't know what I'm doing. He doesn't know what videos are. Great, right, bud. Gonna be the tallest puppy in the room. Come here. Let's, let's show you. Let's show you. Oh. This guy's name is Duo, and he is a beautiful bull. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Thank you. Okay, freak. You are soaking wet, buddy. This guy is soaking wet. Now my hands are covered in dog hair. That's okay. So, lived a couple hundred rounds. One of the barrels stopped firing. Quick Google. People said, yeah, firing pin will go out. Not uncommon. Order a replacement firing pin. So, I ordered. Two replacement firing pins, they're supposed to be, I think they're a little bit longer. They're definitely touted as being harder than these. I think they're stainless steel. I don't know, I'll list the info if it's relevant. If it fixes it, I'll give a shout out to the company that I use to purchase the new firing pins. If it doesn't, then consider this a part one. So it's rainy. I'm gonna do a little, show you guys what's going on, do what I think I need to do to fix it, and then we'll confirm if we're fixed or not. So. Um, I know I rambled a little bit, but let's get started. Okay, again, if it sounds like I'm shouting, I'm sorry, it's raining. I'll do what I can in post to make sure that the uh, audio is not too bad. What we're going to be shooting are these just federal target loads. I mean, they're bog standard, 12 gauge, it's upside down, who cares? Bog standard, 12 gauge, I know these to be good because we bought them by a case, shot a whole bunch of them, they run in pretty much everything that we got. And what I'm expecting to happen is I'm expecting one barrel to fire perfectly fine, consistently, and then I'm expecting the other barrel to either fail completely or at least give me some inconsistent shots. This is interesting. Both of them fired, but I've actually got, both of them fired, but I've actually got the shell hung up underneath that extractor. Well, I'm gonna dig this out. This is, I have had this happen before. Maybe I got a lemon. Maybe this is, maybe this is all for naught. We'll see back got that dug out not that bad of a um not that bad of a malfunction but really spooky because I, I have had that happen before but that happened before i had issues with it not going off so i i don't want to say i got a lemon i especially don't want to say i've got a lemon because it's been sitting in my safe for like three years broken when i should have just sent it back to stoger i don't know so that was the first two. Here's two more just for testing. We'll see. Big flinch. You guys, super sorry about that. Apologies. That was a big flinch, but click and no bang. Bang. And I don't really want to mess with it too much. There is a primer strike on the one that didn't go off, but I've got a really good primer strike on this one. I don't know if you could tell, whatever. Oh yeah, really good primer strike on that one. And we'll just snag this little guy out real quick. Don't do this at home. Really baby primer strike on that one. So that one's been touched. So, so it's my left one that is going off, the right one that is not. We'll feed it, and the right one is the one that gets hung up as well. So there may just be 
something going on with that right tube in its assembly. But two more, here we go. Okay. Both of those went off. Really similar firing pin strikes on those. The ejection was a little tough. I, I don't know, a couple more. Yeah, so both of those went off. Good firing pin strikes. I am concerned about how it's kicking them up though. This left one kicks them up. It just kicks it up a little bit. And this, this, is, not, this is not an ejector gun, so it's not gonna fire them out, but it does, it does have an extractor, so it kind of scoops them up so you can pluck them out. And the left barrel comes out good. The right barrel seems to be really, really sticky. And I don't know why I got that light primer strike. But we'll see if we can't repeat it. It's so... They're... Like, it's... It should not take that much effort. These are different. These are Winchester Super X's. I don't like these. I don't like Winchester ammunition. I think it's bad. But some in the box, so. I'm a little annoyed because when I turn the camera on, and admittedly we shot 12 and a half shells, and one of them did fail. And when I'm out shooting for fun, this thing fails constantly. So, poke it in the right chamber. But now I've got a, it took whatever that was, three times clicking, and I finally get a real primer strike on this. And I wanna say that, I wanna say this is just the ammunition. Maybe this has, maybe this one in particular had a, a particular hard primer in it or something like that. But I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna shoot another box. Okay, so I shot another half box, same deal, these guys, and I got two more light primer strikes. So that's enough for me to want to swap the firing pins. That's three light primer strikes in under, what are these, 25 each, in under 50 rounds. I will say that I'm also still getting, I got one more time, I got a failure to extract. And I do have an interesting kind of wear pattern on this right side extractor. It seems to be wearing a lot faster than this left side. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but we're going to swap the firing pins. I'm going to show you what it takes. Who knows? We'll see if I feel better about it. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to do a little voiceover. Uh, the audio in here was a little messed up. I was just talking to my dad. It was raining. Don't worry about it. Uh, they suggested I get one of these little specialty wrenches for the firing pin retainer plug. I don't know what you would really call that, but I got one. It's got three little prongs. If it's a perfect, do it. It's like 15 bucks. No big deal. Uh, 
I tapped it into place. I heard some of these get a little sticky depending on how many rounds you got. Mine really wasn't that bad. I probably didn't have to tap it into place, but I did. Then standard uh, lefty loosey all the way out. No big deal. And it's a pretty simple mechanism. There's a little threaded plug that holds everything in. There's a, I don't know what you would call a, a return spring or a firing pin spring, reset spring, not sure, on top. And then the firing pin inside, not very complicated. And here I'm just comparing it to my new firing pin. Sure enough, one of them looks shiny and new, maybe a little bit longer. The other one looks blued uh, and a little beat. I read somewhere that you should put anti seize on the threads. I don't know. I didn't have any specialty antifreeze, but what I did have laying around was this arrow shell. Uh, this arrow shell thread grease, which is the same grease that you would use on an AR-15 barrel nut, which I've done before. Um, do your own research. I don't care. This may be wrong. Not sure. But um, I used a little bit of this arrow shell on mine when I was putting it back together. And when you put it back together, really not that complicated. Drop your new firing pin in. Put that little return spring on top of it. Put that plug back in. Righty tighty. No big deal. All right, we'll start Federal. Same stuff we've been using. Same batch. Seem like okay hits. Right one still maybe maybe a little light still. Same deal, still light primer strike on the right barrel. So it's plenty of evidence to me because we've got another light primer strike as opposed to a regular deep primer strike. That's evidence enough to me that there's something going on with this gun beyond the firing pin, unfortunately. The aftermarket firing pins were a little bit longer. Great. They looked perfectly good. They looked of quality. Um, but apparently that wasn't my issue. So there's got to be something in the gun itself that is giving me a fit on just that right um, that right chamber. And it's not every round, but it's, I guess, probably one in every one or two in every 25 rounds, something like that, which is enough for me to, I don't know, send it back to Stoger, see what they... Um, See what they can think. See what they think about it. I don't know. I guess I'll shoot an email. So I mean, hey, I wish it would fix it. I wish this would have fixed it. I wish we'd be done. Uh, but unfortunately, this is um, an issue with my Stoger Coach Gun, Part One. Entry level tactics. Thanks for watching. Uh, stick around. I'll let. I mean, I don't know. I don't know when this is gonna. I don't know when we're gonna figure anything out. But you know, stick around. If you got the same issue with your Stoger Coach Gun. Let me know. Let me know down below. If you're a cowboy guy, if you're a cowboy action guy, let me know what's going on. If you're a guy who knows a cowboy action guy, tag him. Let me know what's going on. I'd love to just resolve this as soon, uh, sooner rather than later. I'm not a gunsmith. Today was kind of the most gunsmithing I could really do. Uh, so I'm going to probably be sending this off somewhere. I don't know. Let me know what's going on. Uh, the end. Thanks.